The winter holiday season was over in Quebec. The January freeze had settled in. Harry and I reminisced about the days before the health crisis when we would travel south in winter for a week or two and walk for hours on long sandy beaches, sit in outdoor cafes and watch small boats coming in and out of a harbour. But health related border restrictions had eased up and we could travel more freely so we drove south. We chose Cape Hatteras National Seashore in North Carolina, USA and discovered miles and miles of perfect beaches. Sometimes it was a lonely place. We often had the beach to ourselves. Other times we came upon people fishing, bird watching or strolling on the beaches and boardwalks. Some were surfing, kiteboarding, or riding off-road vehicles on the beach. Cape Hatteras is one of 10 protected areas known as National Seashores operated by the United States National Park Service. The website for Cape Hatteras explains that it's made up of three islands, Bodie Island, Hatteras Island and Ocracoke Island. However, when I tried to find Bodie Island on the map, I discovered Bodie Island is not actually an island. It used to be an island, but over 200 years ago, the inlet separating it from Nag's head was filled in from the storms, winds and sea and it's now part of the mainland peninsula going all the way north to connect with Virginia City. We drove 95 kilometers on Highway 12 through to the end of Hatteras Island. Our first stop was Coquina Beach about 10 kilometers from the park entrance. It had a nice parking lot leading to miles of golden sand beaches and large dunes. Our next stop was a visit to the Body Lighthouse. The black and white striped lighthouse was impressive, but it was the wildlife around the lighthouse that stole the limelight. Soon after, we walked the boardwalk to a lookout tower to find a pelican lurking in the tower. Next we discovered very large rodents called nutrias that had made homes in a system of tunnels along the boardwalk. We walked to a small wharf on what my phone identified as Blossy Creek and then ended day one by walking back to the lighthouse to take a final night photo of it. At about 16 kilometers, we drove across the Mark Bass Night Bridge. It is four and a half kilometers long 
and carries Highway 12 across the Oregon Inlet between Body Island and Hatteras Island. Under the Bass Knight Bridge, there's a long remnant section of a former bridge. This is the Bonner Bridge Pier, and it's a nice place to walk or go fishing. The signs say this is Pea Island, but the GPS says we're on Hatteras Island, and visitors might wonder if they took a wrong turn somewhere. But Pea Island, like Body Island, is no longer an island because of the shifting sands of the barrier islands and the way that inlets open and close over time. Here there are spectacular flocks of ducks, swans, geese, and other waterfowl. Leaving Pea Island southward on the aptly named Jug Handle Bridge, we pass through the town of Rodanthe. It is a sight to behold the two and three story homes in the sand, propped up on stilts, built with powerful seas and hurricanes in mind. We stopped in at the Salvo Deus area. This beach is on the Pamlico Sound side of the island, facing mainland North Carolina, as opposed to the side facing the open ocean. This makes for warmer and gentler waters enjoyed by kayakers, stand-up paddle boarders, and by young families playing in the shallows. Harry and I walked on every beach we could. Once on a beach, there is a sameness about beaches that can make it hard to remember exactly which dip in the dunes you go through to get back to your car. On beaches we're not familiar with, we use at least three ways. As soon as we are over the dunes, we find something permanent and distinct about where we crossed over the dunes. Beach axis numbers, buildings, beach ramps, or even trash cans can help, but they can be similar all along the beach. We also leave with fully charged cell phones to use GPS if available. You could also snap a photo. We know the time, so if we walk for an hour, we know it takes about one hour to get back. This helps us find roughly the right spot. Last, we sometimes make a large X in the sand. This is not reliable as the only marker because it could disappear. It's also a good idea when you don't know a beach to check the signs posted to find out about special warnings. As we explored the beaches, we read the outdoor interpretive panels explaining that these outer banks have been a deadly trap for sailors over the centuries. Along the North Carolina coast, navigational challenges posed by the Diamond Shoals area off Cape Hatteras caused the loss of thousands of ships and an unknown number of human lives. More than 5,000 ships have sunk in these waters since record keeping began in 1526. Many shipwrecks were caused by shifting sandbars due to rough waves and unpredictable currents. Nicknamed the Graveyard of the Atlantic, another danger was the Outer Banks Wreckers. Some residents of the Outer Banks, known as Wreckers, made part of their living by scavenging wrecked ships or even luring ships to their destruction. Horses with a lantern tied to their neck would be walked along the beach. The lantern's up and down motion would appear to other ships that there was clear water and a ship ahead. The unsuspecting captain would then drive his ship ashore following the false light. During World War II, German U-boats would sit offshore and prey on passing freighters and tankers silhouetted against the lights onshore. 
Hundreds of ships along the North Carolina coast were torpedoed by submarines in this fashion in what became known as Torpedo Alley. There are seven villages on Hatteras Island, and each community had its own charm and its own selection of attractions, vacation rentals, campgrounds, and amenities. We had a short walk in Buxton Woods, a maritime evergreen forest. It was near the end of our third and last day, so we opted for the Buxton Woods Nature Trail, a three-quarter mile loop trail close to the Cape Hatteras Lighthouse. After being on the beach for three days, it was a nice place for a little shade. 